My name is Miguel Romano. I'm president of ART, the Associated Republicans of Texas. On behalf of ART, I'd like to welcome you to our Texas Hispanic Leadership Forum this morning in Houston. Thank you all so very much for being here. We at ART are very excited about an initiative that we launched last year called the Hispanic Voter Network. The Hispanic Voter Network is an effort to build a statewide network of conservatives that are passionate about the role that Hispanics must play in the future of the Republican Party. We really wanted to give Hispanic elected officials and business leaders and community volunteers an opportunity to gather and share their thoughts and their ideas and their concerns and really be candid. And what we found is that we all want the same thing. We want to connect the Hispanic community to the conservative values of the Republican Party. And having this dialogue was so crucial to making sure we establish that long-term conversation and engagement with the Hispanic community. And, and really our enthusiastic response that we heard across the state really let us know that we're on the right track. And this morning, we're going to have the opportunity to hear from one more voice, from U.S. Senator Marco Rubio from Florida. I now have the, the privilege of, of introducing a, an elected official that has been a tremendous supporter and advocate for our cause and our efforts. He's, he's such a believer in what we do. He's traveled literally the state with us from Corpus Christi to El Paso to San Antonio and is here with us this morning in Houston. And you know, the funny thing is this is what he does for fun in his spare time. <laughs> Please welcome Attorney General Greg Abbott. One of the things that gives me great hope about our future is Miguel and precisely what ART is doing to build a stronger platform for the connection between the Hispanic community and the Republican Party. We gather here today for several causes. One of our causes we gather for is to begin the fight now to ensure that Republicans retain a supermajority in the Texas House of Representatives. <laughs> to work toward Republicans gaining a supermajority in the Texas Senate for the first time in Texas history. <laughs> but we also gather for a cause that is far greater than just this next election. We gather for a cause that is for the next generation. It's the cause of cementing the unification between the Republican Party and the Hispanic community. We have already seen the undeniable trend in the state of Texas. Last election in 2010, Texans elected Jose Alaceda, John Garza, Larry Gonzalez, as well as Raul Torres. And then after the election, Aaron Pena knew that the Democrat Party was no longer a place to call home, and he switched parties to the Republican Party. But my friends, we're just getting started. Because this November, we're going to add to their ranks by electing J.M. Lozano, Jason Villalba, and David Pineda to strengthen the Hispanic forces among the Republican Party. And in November, history will be made by electing the first Hispanic to the United States Senate in the state of Texas. That Latino will be Republican, and his name is Ted Cruz. Now there is, of course, or there are, of course, reasons why Latino leadership is trending from the Democrat Party to the Republican Party. It's in part because the Democrat Party is increasingly showing hostility towards the core values that Americans share. Values You can applaud Democrat hostility, that's fine. <laughs> Our religious beliefs seem to be threatened by the Democrat Party. The family unit is being undermined. Economic progress is being hamstrung. 
and they seem to force all of us to depend on government even more. Well, frankly, I've, I've seen this transformation in my family unit itself. I've seen it through the eyes of my wife's family. My wife is a Latina, and I gotta tell you, she has given me dispensation today. <laughs> this day, 31 years ago, I got married to my wife, Cecilia. She said, why are you not going to be in town <laughs> on our anniversary? And I said, because I want to be with Marco Rubio. <laughs> the only party that can put America on the pathway to prosperity is the Republican Party. And the leaders who can guide us there are senators like Marco Rubio and soon to be Senator Ted Cruz. Those leaders best capture the Republican principles and the Latino values of a belief in a free enterprise, the sanctity of life, the reality that education should empower people rather than government programs that trap them. The reality is that 2012 is a dynamic year for the Republican Party, for the Latino community, and for the successful unification of those two powerful sources. Together, we can ensure that liberty, opportunity, and prosperity remain the birthright of every American. This election is our chance to restore the American dream and the elected officials who represent us in the United States. And in the process, for us Texans, make America a lot more like Texas rather than allowing them to make Texas a lot more like Washington. With your help, we can get that done. God bless you all and God bless Texas. Thank you, General Abbott. I'm, I, I gotta say, I'm just grateful you put the blame on this event on Senator Rubio, not ART, thank you. <laughs> Um, I'd now like to introduce uh, our ART Chairman, George C., and I've got to say it's an absolute privil privilege and, and pleasure to work with George as our leader. He's so passionate about what we do. He travels state with us, and we're so fortunate to have his leadership and his dedication. George? Howdy. Howdy. How's everybody this morning? Isn't this fun? Get out on a Wednesday morning and hear from what I think is the most dynamic senator in the U.S. Senate. It's good stuff. We Texans love a great story. And we love heroes. And Marco Rubio has a great story. I want to thank you for everything you do to spread the message of a limited government and free enterprise, especially to Americans of Hispanic descent. I, I remember as, how as a young boy I watched my first Republican National Convention uh, on television with my grandfather in 1980. My grandfather was who I called Papa, because that's what my mom called him, was born in 1899 to a farming family in rural Cuba. And when he was very young, he contracted polio, and it left him disabled for the rest of his life. Uh, because he couldn't work the farm, his family sent him to school, where he became the only member of his family who learned how to read and write. And he would read anything and everything he could. From the time I was born until he passed away when I was 13, my grandfather, uh, he lived with us. And I didn't realize this then, but as a boy, my grandfather was my best friend. I would sit on the porch of our home and listen to him tell me stories about politics and history and baseball while he puffed on one of his three daily cigars. You know, it's been three decades since I sat on that porch, and I don't remember all the things we talked about. But the one thing I clearly remember is the one thing he never wanted me to forget, that because of the circumstances that he was born into, there was only so much that he was able to accomplish in life. But he wanted me to understand that because I was an American son, there was nothing that I could not do. When people were told the rights were whatever their government told them they were, almost everyone was poor, trapped in the same life their parents had. Power and wealth and justice belonged to only a few. And it was always the same people. 
But a little, a little over 200 years ago, some extraordinary men conceived on this continent a new nation based on some very different ideas. That our rights are given to us by God, not by our government. And that among those rights are the right to life and to liberty and to pursue happiness. It was an amazing experiment. Oppressed people from all over the world, disadvantaged people from all over the planet came to this new nation where regardless of the circumstances that they were born into, they had the right to decide their own dreams and the opportunity to go as far as their talent and their work ethic would take them. They started businesses and created opportunities for themselves and others. They succeeded. They failed and tried again. When someone uses their own money to open a business or to expand an existing one, Government's job is to make it easier for people to do that. Because if they succeed, they hire more people who then spend their money into the economy, helping others create jobs. That's how prosperity is spread throughout our economy. That's how you help grow the middle class. So this election is a choice between two very different kind of leaders. But it's also something more. It's a, re it's a referendum on our very identity as a nation and as a people. For two centuries now, we have been the light unto man mankind, the best hope of the earth. But that's always been a choice. Each generation of American has had to decide that they wanted to remain exceptional. And then they went and did what had to be done to keep it that way. And now the time has come for us to decide for ourselves. The price of greatness has always been steep. And some wonder whether it's worth the cost. We would do well to heed the ancient admonition that for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. We are a blessed people, blessed with a land rich in natural resources and fertile soil, blessed to have been protected from our enemies by two vast oceans while our nation grew too strong to challenge, and blessed with immigrants from all over the world who bring their dreams to this land, work hard to achieve them, and make us all more prosperous. We don't know why God has chosen to bless us in this way, but we do know that we are blessed, not just so we can have more, we are blessed so we can give. And the most important thing that we can give the world right now is the enduring example of an exceptional America. Now some are uncomfortable when God is mentioned in politics, but I cannot speak the truth about the things that make America great without acknowledging that faith in God, the source of all of our rights, is the most important value of all. There's only one nation that adopted as its motto the words, in God we trust. And it became the greatest nation that man has ever known. Like so many of you, I'm a generation removed from a very different life. My father lost his mother when he was nine. He had to leave school and go to work for the next 70 years. As a child, he often went to bed hungry. My mother was one of seven girls raised in a home with dirt floors. Because he was disabled, my fa her father, my, my, my grandfather, Papa, often struggled to provide for his daughters. My mom says she never went to bed hungry, but she's pretty sure her parents did. To America because they heard that here, where you started out didn't determine where you ended up. They never made it big. My dad was a bartender. My mom was a cashier, a maid, and a stock clerk, stock clerk at Kmart. They were never rich, but they were successful. Because just a few decades removed from hunger and hopelessness, they made possible for their children all the things that had been impossible for them. Some like to remind us that throughout history, all great nations have risen and fallen. And they, they therefore say that no matter what we do, that America is inev inevitably destined to decline. That's just not true. You see, um, those other nations, the empires of history that fell, they were built on the conquest of other people. But America is built on something else. America isn't built on the conquest of people. It's built on their dreams and on their God-given rights. Dreams that will never go away. God-given rights that existed before time itself. Now before us lies the opportunity to write the next chapter in that story. 
so that a generation from now, those who follow us can look back on this time and say that we did our part, that we did not let fear destroy our faith in free enterprise, that we were not so foolish to believe that somehow government could replace family or God, that at a time when we were headed in the wrong direction, we trusted the principles of our founding to solve the challenges of our time.